Go again. Take two. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, it's all right. everybody, I'm Jerry Walker. Welcome to my channel, Jay Walker Productions. This show is gonna be called Your Music Scene, and what I plan to do here is talk about mostly our local music scene, uh, maybe not exclusively our local music, but generally what I'd like to do is feature a different band per episode uh, from our own scene, and just talk about uh, whatever they have going on and review some of their music and just uh, make sure that everybody's getting heard as much as possible. We have a lot of really talented musicians in our area making a lot of great music. And uh, I feel like rather than do another sort of generic music show and get lost in a giant ocean of the internet, why not mostly focus on our local scene and uh, give some of them the attention that those guys deserve? So first episode with me today, my good friend, Josh Harms, drummer from my band, Sardis. You may or may not know me. You probably, uh, if, if you've been in the local music scene in this area, you probably do know my band, Sardis. Sardis has been a thing since 2006. Uh, the other two members, Sean Roycraft, vocals and guitar, Kevin Hasselquist, lead guitar, Myself, Jerry Walker on bass, Josh Harms here on drums. I joined Sardis circa 2016, sometime that year. Josh hooked up with us about a year after that, maybe something like that. Yeah, no, I think it was 2017. 2017, yeah, so yeah, not too long after. <laughs> it's actually funny, I never really, I was aware of that Sardis was a band, but I had never really heard their music. Um, I've been a part of this music scene off and on since 2001 pretty long time showing my age a little bit um old yeah, yeah. <laughs> i actually my birthday was four <laughs> days ago i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say how old i just turned but it's old enough we don't really celebrate birthdays anymore uh yeah Ugh, grab, the, grab the whiskey here anyway um i had not really been involved in the local scene for uh, for a while there uh, but I had recently, at the time, been thinking about maybe getting involved in a new project, join a band, start a new band. Actually, Josh, you probably remember I was talking to you at the time about possibly doing like a, a 90s band cover thing. Remember? we were. I'm still on board with that, uh, Yeah, too. I am too, yeah. actually. <laughs> still on board yeah, with that. We, we kind of, we, we got a little <laughs> bit of interest going in that. And then um, it, what actually happened was... I so I used to work at the local music store in Joplin here, Ernie Williamson Music, uh, for several years, and so I would still be in and out of there all the time. And uh, I knew one of the guys that worked there, Sean. He worked there at the time. Uh, I knew he had this band Sardis, and I knew that for a while they had been looking for a bass player, and I hadn't really, you know, thought anything of it. Um, I had generally actually played guitar in most of the bands I've been in, although I've played, you know, guitar and bass both for a long, long time, but I was actually just lying out here on my couch one day scrolling through Facebook, and uh, Sardis had just recently released uh, the music video for Satisfied, and it just randomly popped up on my Facebook feed, and for whatever reason, it, you guys can probably relate to this, I just hit play, and 30 seconds later, I was going, what is this? I was like, I was not expecting this at all. I had no idea there was a band like this in the area. I, I heard it and I was like, this is right up my alley. Like, I love this sort of style of classic heavy metal, traditional metal. I just love that stuff. I literally got up, put my shoes on, drove down to Ernie Williamson Music. Sean happened to be there. I said, hey man, are you still looking for a bass player? He said, yeah, actually I said, Sign me up. I will audition tomorrow. And I auditioned about a week later, actually. But <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how I hooked up. Uh, what's funny is, so I, you know, I went in, I played a couple of songs. They liked me and everything. They were like, hey, cool. By the way, our drummer's quitting. <laughs> Michael Rios, who was the drummer at the time. Yeah, he had told the guys, he's like, hey, for whatever reasons, he's like, you know, I, um, 
I'm start trying to find a replacement for me. He didn't, we wasn't quitting right away. In fact, he still stuck around for most of a year and we played a lot of shows together. <laughs> so he was quitting, but he didn't quit, you know, for a long time. But uh, I told the guys, I said, well, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, I've been playing around here for a long time. I know some, some pretty good drummers. I said, one of my best friends happens to be like the best drummer I know in the area. Let me call him and see what he's up to. Josh will remember, he could tell you this story. I called him on the phone one day. I said, hey, man, uh, you know, we had been talking about like trying to put a new project together, maybe this 90s thing or something like that. I said, how do you feel about like classic heavy metal? <laughs> and what did you say, Josh? Pretty sure. I probably was like, eh, I don't know about all that. Like, it's not my forte necessarily uh, as far as what I listen to and what I play, but... I said, let me check him out at least and checked him out. And I was just kind of, I was hesitant because I didn't really think necessarily I could fill the shoes in that type of genre of metal necessarily. But yeah, you, know. you shut me down basically. Yeah, well, <laughs> That's what and, and a nice way I was like, one of my best friends you know. in the world, we played in multiple <laughs> bands together for years. And uh, he was kind of just like, I thought he, honestly, I thought he would jump at the chance, like to be back, you know, just to be play whatever. But he was kind of, he was being a little more discriminating at the time, apparently. And he's like, ah, I'm not sure I'm the right guy for that. And I thought, dang, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me move on to, uh, to some other ideas. Well, part of that is, you know, been in the scene, moved away, came back and had actually gotten together with a couple projects and you and I had just ended a different project when you went into that one as well so it was like i kind of needed a break because i just felt like you know it's always the drummer's fault in the stories you know it's always so Freaking i didn't i didn't want to like invest the time if what because i had actually done that in a, another band i you know was invested in writing and learning all this stuff and it went nowhere so i kind of just needed a break at the moment but that and then like i said the the genre of itself i wasn't very familiar with i guess was my thing so i didn't think i could do justice to what the sound needed to be basically was my thing but yeah i told you no <laughs> and, and then you contacted me again and yes. i told you no again yes like a couple months later and then it became well could you just help us out right and that's how i knew for I like get you. for like one show and <laughs> i have a guilty conscience so you know i was like all right i'll, I'll one show and then I believe I still had to come and audition. Yeah, the same way I did. In, in the same manner. And my audition was supposed to be like one song, and I played like three or four or yeah. something like that. And then I've been there ever since, so then I guess it wasn't a one-time gig. But. I guess not. I knew <laughs> I would get you that way. <laughs> I thought, well, Josh, uh, he uh, told me no. Dang, I wasn't expecting <laughs> that. I thought, eh, Josh is one of my, Josh is one of my oldest friends from... It, since I've been in Missouri, I'll get them. Let me work on them a little bit. Anyway, as I was saying, Micah stuck around for a while. So, it was, you know, it was a full year. Yeah, we had we had some time to work with. I tossed around a couple other ideas, but in my head, I knew I was like, Josh is the right guy. Yeah, he's he's not so so much into this like specific sort of subgenre of metal. But I mean, this dude's a freaking phenomenal drummer. We've played we've plus you and I have been in. A lot of other kinds of bands too. Like, actually, let's talk about that for a second. So, when I first moved to Joplin here in 2001, I uh, I was I was just like looking to get involved with anything I could at the time, and I loved heavy stuff, and I was mostly looking to get involved in a metal band and played around with a few ideas. But the first like real band that I got involved with was a band called Everwill. Which, if you remember Everwill, like you've been around for a while. Um, th these were some some younger guys than me, but um, and they were a little green for sure. But um, they had I saw potential in them, and so uh, I played with them for a while. And we wrote and recorded some stuff, and then we went through a couple of bass players. I played lead guitar in that band. Then we needed to replace our drummer, like towards the end. So we wanted to keep going, but we needed to replace our drummer. So I thought. Uh, well, it's audition drummers. I didn't really know that many people at the time. I show up to band practice one day. Who's there? Josh is there me. before me <laughs> auditioning. So this was 2005, I think. 
It was either two thousand. It was either late two thousand five or early two thousand six. It was. It was 06. Well, I don't. It, it was, might have been 06. It was probably it was 06. A, it was either or. Yeah, but it was. I think it was early 2006. And you know how I know that? I had come out of high school, so I know I wasn't okay. in school anymore. I graduated in 05. Okay. So it could have been 05, well, maybe I, that summer. I know that it was that time because one of my favorite <laughs> albums at, that? from that era had dropped, which was Ascendancy from Trivium. I'm sure you guys are at least aware of that. That happened. Mm-hmm. That came out in 2005. I was like, man, I was in love with that album at the time. I so like me personally, I was just super into it. And I showed up at this rehearsal, and I what do I hear is the drummer playing "Pull Harder" on the strings of your martyr, uh, which was the you know the first big single from that album uh, on the drums. And this is like not an easy drum song either. I mean, no, no. You, yeah, it's a workout. Yeah, you got to <laughs> be pretty legit to do it justice. And I hear this guy just banging it out, and I'm like, hold up. What is happening here right now? That was like his audition song was like him and me playing that song. I played it on guitar. He played it on drums. And I was yeah. like, yes, this is the guy. And uh, as a matter of fact, what well, happened right after that rehearsal was over? Well, the thing was, is I had known the singer because I worked with him, Ben. Ben, yeah. And he's who brought me the rehearsal. Just And it wasn't him. And it was like, hey, just... Um, here's two of our songs off of, I think you guys had like a demo. Yeah. And so he gave me that to listen to and practice that. But it was literally like, it wasn't a full band rehearsal audition. It was like, you play by yourself kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wasn't there to coordinate that. Yeah. It was kind <laughs> of spur of the moment. Started, yeah. Randomly one night. That's funny. And, actually, I didn't remember yeah. how you actually got involved with that. So it was, you worked with Ben. Yeah. I now that you mentioned ben. it, I remember that. Yeah. And I don't even know how it worked. I mean, we talked at work, but we worked completely different shifts because he would come in as part of the overnight crew and I was working days and I don't even know how we crossed paths. Like, oh, by the way, hey, this guy's looking for a drummer in a band or something. And hmm. somehow we ended up talking and that was that. And audition, met you. Thought it was awesome because you did grab a guitar and you played the song with me. Yeah. And then you go, what else do you know? And I was like, well, I know Gunshot. Yeah. You know that one? And we played that and then it was like, okay. And everyone was like, all right, cool. You can have it. This is this is also back when MySpace was really big. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you go to the MySpace page and kind of see who's all added on there. And you have your song playing and whatnot. So, yeah, your, your guys' page looked legit. We so. had our, we had our, <laughs> we had like, I, I, I want to say like a three song demo or something like that up there at the time. Yeah. That's pretty mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. So, so you, yeah. So you met us through Ben. I had forgotten that actually. Ben Bowder. If, are you still around here, Ben? If you happen to see this, man, hit me up, man. It's been, it's been way too long. I have him on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I do too, but I don't think he either doesn't post stuff or I just don't ever, I, I don't really mm. scroll through Facebook. Sorry, guys. Right. I, I use it to market stuff like this. That's, <laughs> otherwise, I would delete Facebook for real. But I know that's the cool thing to say, but it's true though. So what happened? As as I was loading up to leave practice, audition, whatever it was, <laughs> you go, hey, man, you're really great. It'd be awesome to play with you, but I'm going to tell you right now, this this band isn't going to go anywhere. It's pretty much over. I think we're breaking up. And I was like, awesome. Glad I uh, invested like three hours doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So the thing with that was... Yeah, it was just kind of a writing on the wall thing. Like it was clear that everyone had kind of run its course at that point. And when I saw when I saw Josh, I thought, okay, whatever is next is going to involve him, uh, because at the time I hadn't found a drummer. Uh, you know, no disrespect to our old drummers; they're, they're great dudes, but I hadn't found a drummer who could play like extreme metal, anything like that up to that point. So I was super excited to say the least. Yeah, I grabbed you after rehearsal, and I was like, "Hey, man!" I was like, "Don't uh, don't worry too much about the several <laughs> stuff, but you and I, we're gonna do some stuff." And so, and we anyway, we did. Long story short, we we tried out a few other things at the time. You know, none of that sort, none of that really worked out into anything. Nothing you know, worked real. out. Real, yeah. We 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 had definitely had some struggles really getting anything going. Um, you know, he, this is actually the first like metal band that you and I are actually a part of. Yeah, that's kind of true, actually, because everyone... We started off wanting to do that, and we went completely polar opposite yes. as far as what so, we played. Yeah, in, so, so the, the next layer of uh, of the story of us was, what was the next 
thing we did? Was it 99 for one? No, like, it, was the, it was the proof of life with Steve. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we were doing some like acoustic kind of bass stuff for a while with another good friend of ours. And then um, we could we could we could go really far down this rabbit trail. But <laughs> the the next major thing we got involved with was a band yeah. called 99 for one, which actually started out as like a like a top 40, like contemporary Christian kind of like cover band thing with our buddy Randy Brooks, who you might know from 102.5 kicks country in the morning. <laughs> Uh, it's a great shout out. Yeah, yeah. Randy, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Brooks isn't his real name, but that's a country th- country station thing. But this long story, how, how we sort of got involved with that. But uh, we both basically joined up with that at the same time. Uh, they needed literally, they needed like a, a guitar player and a drummer for whatever reason. We joined that and then quickly morphed that band into instead of being like a, a cover band like that, we started writing a lot of originals and it turned into a, like a very blues rock kind of kind of thing uh, which was cool actually uh like randy phenomenal guitar player good songwriter we put a lot of pretty cool stuff together we put a demo out uh the pr- production on that demo was total garbage so don't go find it but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh that was before i was uh producing bands by the way that was the last thing you and i really did together for a while and then um after that stopped being a thing pretty much until i hit you up about this because honestly that was the last thing i was involved in too that's kind of when i got out of the scene for a while there and i had moved away so. yeah you you moved away yeah. and moved to you moved to St. Louis and Tulsa and Pittsburgh and all over the place for a while there. Here we are, 2020, you know. So one thing I'd like to do with uh, the various guests that I can get on here is talk a little bit about what kind of stuff they're into that might not be super obvious based on the current musical projects they're involved with. So I happen to know pretty much everything about Josh already, but uh, for the benefit of everybody else, what kind of stuff are you into um, specifically? Like, what kind of music do you dig? And anything else you want to say about kind of your your music history? And then favorite band, Argus Birds Red. Favorite drummer, Matt Griner. Just put a new um, album out this yep, week. Yep. Had to, so did you actually listen to it yet? I know you were waiting I, to I get started, the physical. I started, and they released that uh, music video for Bones. And yeah. I actually watched that last night. Josh is so, a hardcore fan, so he's waiting. Yeah. He actually buys the CD still. And, yep. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. I, I love August Burns Red, too. Actually, when I was in, I was in a band for a little while called My Darling, My Blood around here. That was like a kind of a metalcore kind of band. And we actually played with August Burns Red. Once or once or twice here at I think at the Foundry here in Joplin, if I remember correctly, I, that's kind of when they got on my radar. And I think I don't know if I had met I, I had knew you by then, but I think we we kind of lost touch for a little while around yeah, that. Yeah, you period. knew me, but yeah, you, you're actually who turned me I'm on. I'm the one who showed yeah. you. That's right. Yeah, he said, "Hey, here's yeah. these two CDs: it was, uh, Messengers and Thrill Seeker." Yeah, yeah, yep. that's right. I turned you on to your favorite band. I forgot yep. about that. Yeah. Uh, I thought they were pretty cool, yeah, and um, and then you definitely ran with that. And if I'm so, you're actually kind of like friends with Matt Griner, the drummer from August Burns Red, aren't you? <laughs> or, uh, uh, friendly, uh, friendly acquaintances, at least. Like, yeah, I know you guys I've, like actually talk all the time and stuff. Yeah, uh, got connections with him, I guess. But uh, we ended up meeting when I was in Tulsa. He came and did a drum clinic at Drum World, and I was really good friends. If you're ever in Tulsa, go to Drum World for all your drummer needs. Um, That's a free but, plug. Yep. Nice. Real good friends with Matt Donaldson there. He's the owner, and more and more talking to him. He's, you know, hey, I want to do a clinic. Who, sh- who should we get? And I'm like, oh, you, you need to get Matt Griner. And he did it. And then uh, not only did he do it, I came in one day to the shop and he was like, uh, you're going to take full point on this. Like, you're going to go pick him up. And, and of course, I like fangirled about it. But <laughs> yeah, and met Matt, super cool dude, remembers everybody's every show, sits there and talks to everybody. And he, he strikes me as that kind of guy. Yeah. Like, just maintain contact ever since, going to a bunch of shows that I can go to. And yeah, that that was that. But yeah, super, super awesome guy. Um, all those guys. Are yeah, I was going to say all those awesome, guys seem like really cool but, guys. I've never really, I didn't get to know them or anything like that. I mean, I probably talked to them briefly in passing, but no. um, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Before before ABR, it was probably like Kill Switch Engage was kind of my band I and that. Trivium yeah. as well. Those were like kind of what that I was early two thousands metalcore stuff. Yeah, all them Chimera. And yeah, I loved like, all that stuff too. Yeah, that's. 
I still, I still like all still that listen stuff. to all that <laughs> you, stuff. You so. still primarily yeah. listen to that stuff. Yeah. It's just there's something about it. I, I try to it, keep up with the with the new stuff and the kids these days. But Josh, this is yeah. funny because I'm older than you. But Josh, you're kind of the curmudgeonly guys. Like, nah, I just listen to what I listened to yeah. ten years ago. It's it's probably it's the, it's the drum stuff for me. Yeah. It's the it's the deciding factor what I'm going to listen to. But even from the range, you know, I'm talking all these metalcore and you know even hardcore, any of that, but you know, like Carter Beaufort's another one of my favorite drummers. Yeah. So I'll just play Dave, Dave Matthews. Matthews. If you could, if, I still rock an iPod. So <laughs> um, that's just say stuff. But yeah. yeah, you you shuffle my iPod. You, I can't you get this don't guy know. to get a Spotify <laughs> subscription for yeah. anything. Yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But uh, I still listen to 90s hip hop all the time. So. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I can see that yeah, yeah. <laughs> from the teacher. But. Yeah, I grew up on that stuff, man. Yeah, I, you don't have to convince me on that one. Uh, that's the only, really, as far as hip hop goes, rap, that's pretty much still to this day the only stuff I get into that much. 90s, some of the later 2000s, the, some of the more, I don't know, the different Eminem, you know, and like Outcast. I loved Outcast when they came out just because it was so different, stuff like that. But I don't, I mean, that's, I don't want to be like old man yelling at clouds or anything, but I, I do. I do have trouble with a lot of the modern hip rap today. I just, oh, yeah. <sighs> unless it's coming from any of those people. I'm like, sure there's. Maybe you, know. you guys can help me out. I'm sure there's probably some stuff out there that I would get into, but uh, my younger son Silas, he's he's really into a lot of that stuff, and uh, so I've tried to be like, yo, find something that you know I'll like, because I'm sure there's it's out there. I'm just not going to find it on my own. Well, and then you have well, there's the crossover. You know, that's happened a lot, too, where you have, like, Falling in Reverse, that band. I'm aware you of know, them. You know, it's, it's rap, but as they get into the choruses, that's where all the rock and then some of the metal influences. Like, I hear. You know, there'd be rap and, you know, the kind of electronica sounding, and then all of a sudden they go into a breakdown where you're screaming, there's double bass throughout the whole entire bridge i've so. been seeing stuff lately like like really recently th that have been saying that like new metal is coming back so that's probably what you're talking about. i i don't i haven't really you know i don't know i'm just not that savvy to what's the current trends i guess but that's kind of funny to me like new it, i guess it's been long enough everything goes in cycles i guess it's been 20 years now so Pretty it's much. time you know, like then that's you, that's fine with me. And you still got artists like Papa Roach is still out there. That's true. You have a few you know, of the, the holdouts up and that down. are still yeah. going. And they're um, still popular. And, so. you know, like Godsmack. I still love listening to all those songs, but. Yeah, it's funny, you know, like I, I like I liked Godsmack on their like their first album. I, like at the time, that was like when, when I was first like getting decent at guitar and stuff, you know, so it was really. The, when the guys just started doing the drop D stuff, you know, it was really accessible and kind of easy to get into, uh, you know, out these kind of riffs and stuff. And like today, like I couldn't listen to that anymore, but like their newer stuff that like all their old fans would complain about. And like, I feel like is so much better <laughs> to be honest, as far as that kind of stuff goes. I like all their stuff. I try to be open-minded <laughs> about that stuff. Yeah. I, I you know, like, uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with, bands evolving and sort of changing their sound i may or may not be into it but like i'm not going to be bitter about it if you know somebody's doing that i mean i can only imagine if i were in the same band for that long like, gosh like i'd be you know i probably wouldn't want to be doing the same thing over and over and over and over Mid like acdc put the same album out like 50 times you know yeah. like and they're great but like that is what it is you know so to each their own. So here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go, and this is my plan for future episodes, if I can get away with it, is I'm going to go ahead and feature a video, uh, maybe even two in this case. We'll see how much time we got. This first song I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this is a song we have called Gremlin. This was the first single off of our new EP, Viral, that came out December 20th. Uh, available everywhere music is available so go check it out if you haven't on our youtube channel on the sardis youtube channel you should be able to find that pretty easily youtube sardis i think that's it this was the first single release the first music video that we shot the song gremlin i think it's actually the second track on the ep let's talk about this for a minute we uh, this was actually shot by our buddy from springfield Lyndon caldwell Lyndon caldwell media check him out if you if you have a band you need music videos hit him up he does great job he did uh two of our music videos in fact couldn't be happier with how they turned out <laughs> this video gremlin 
This is this is probably my personal favorite song on the album. I think that's kind of I think that's even kind of the general band consensus. Yeah, mine like, too. yeah this song uh, is funny because it evolved. Uh, this was a song that Kevin brought to the band, um, and he had a pretty complete demo of it, relatively speaking, at the time. And uh, like some drums he had actually recorded live, even, and then some lyrics and vocal melodies, but. I think the only thing that didn't change completely were that the actual, the basic arrangement of the song and the guitar, uh, because we, Sean completely rewrote the lyrics, vocal melodies. You completely redid the drums. Um, I, I retracted the bass. I don't, I'm not, I couldn't even tell you how different it is or if there even was bass on the, the original demo. I don't even remember, but, um, this song evolved uh, definitely way more than any of the other tracks on this album. And um, I think it became all of our favorites. It's probably the most progressive track on the album. It goes through the most sort of dynamic changes. And, you know, it just is it probably, in my opinion, the, the most interesting one from a musical standpoint. I know it has, I don't know, you'd have to tell me as far as like the drums. I don't know if it necessarily has, uh, if that all holds true for like drums specifically or, or any, you know, instruments as far as that goes. But as a song, I think that's true for sure. The song, it's like, I don't want to say love hate, but it is a love hate because it was probably the most challenging song for me writing, uh, just because it is so intricate and progressive and movements essentially yeah. to come up with something that just flowed with all those parts. Um, but it's my favorite, I mean, it's probably the most technical. Not necessarily like, you know, fastest or anything, but yeah. definitely most technical as far as all these songs go, as far as using everything on the kit, basically. So, yeah, uh, it definitely goes through lots of different kinds of changes and stuff. I remember. So we actually re we tracked the drums for this whole EP, the five songs in this EP all together in a few days, two years ago. This it was it was April yep. two years ago. <laughs> Yeah, so we tracked wow. the drums. We had some demos, you know, and a couple of the songs on, on that are on this EP are songs that were this band was doing before I even joined the band. Narcissistic, a version of it at least. Sensational Society, I think, I guess that's it. I don't remember. Let's see, Solace was new. Uh, yeah, Solace, Gremlin, Gremlin was new. Black, Black Snake, Snake was new. Yeah, yeah, so Narcissistic Voyeur and Sensational Society were songs that were actually existed before I even joined Sardis, but they hadn't been recorded um, so, you know, we threw kind of threw these together and we tracked all these and we had the drums done for forever before we finally got everything else tracked and ready to go. About a year. Yeah. I mean, we're, it, it just <laughs> took a long time for a variety of reasons, but I mixed and mastered uh, this EP over it. Honestly, I had most of it done forever until we were just waiting on the last few things to get done. And eventually it came together, finally got it out in December. Now it's available for all of you guys. So, without further ado, this is Gremlin. There's not much room for you. So, you ready to go to Albuquerque? You good? On the telly? Yeah.
And we're back. As you can see, that one's <laughs> a little bit different. Um, you know, it's funny. We had once uh, Sean had all the lyrics and the story written for this song. Pretty, I'm pretty sure I had the idea for the general idea for this video. Um, so naturally, if you haven't picked it up by now, that song uh, is taken directly from the Twilight Zone episode, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, the classic one from the original version of the show with William Shatner in the episode. Uh, there was another version of that episode later on that, uh, um, I forget the actor's name, another famous actor did sort of a different version of it. But this is a little bit of both, but it's mostly the, the classic version of that. Um, obviously, it's silly. It's fun. It was low budget uh, for sure. We actually filmed this at Josh's house in your upstairs loft. Yep. We made that set. If you didn't notice, if you were paying very much attention, you definitely noticed. It was a cardboard set. We took a crap ton of cardboard and built a fake airplane, like an old-timey airplane uh, set, and got some friends of ours to be extras, and just filmed a just a really silly sort of walkthrough version of that episode. <laughs> Took us a couple of days to get that set up and everything uh, figured out. I honestly did not know how that was going to turn out. <laughs> the idea that the idea I had for it was like, hey, let's just be silly. Let's make it like obviously low budget, you know, and, and just kind of kitschy. And in retrospect now, it turned out pretty yeah, awesome. Like, worked. I think it's pretty apparent, you know, that it was it's supposed to. It's a little tongue in cheek, the whole thing. It's supposed to be kind of silly. Uh, it wasn't just us like trying to take this too seriously and just doing a really bad job, I promise. So, yeah, as I said, we had Lyndon Caldwell come out and filmed it, put it together, edited it, and uh, it turned out pretty cool. The The lead in that video was our friend uh, Luke from another local band to Joplin Granger. Awesome, like, pop punk band. Hopefully I'll have them on an episode actually coming up pretty soon. Luke and Tori DeWitt, and uh, they were the, they played the lead just because uh, we thought it'd be cool to have some other people who were probably a little bit better actors <laughs> actually sort of take that role. And we were... Actually, you were the only one that really wasn't in the video. Yeah. Um, you were... <laughs> Josh was really busy with some other stuff he had to do that day, and so we had plenty of help. So, it, you know, it, was, it wasn't strictly... I'm not uh, a good actor anyway, necessary so I was anything, okay so. with it. As me and Kevin, uh, if you didn't notice, Sean was the gremlin, so he had, of course, uh, another major role in there, but he had his silly little outfit on. And uh, anyway, we had a lot of fun with that. I hope you guys like that. Again, it's available on our YouTube channel, on the Sardis YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to watch the video, that's the second song on the EP. This next video is another one that we shot. We did this one live, so we actually did this one not that long ago at the Shuffle in uh, Springfield, Missouri. February, I believe. Pretty cool little venue there that we hadn't played before. And we knew we wanted to do this song like a live version. I mean, the uh, it's the studio recording, but we want to do like a live video shot of it. Just because this song in particular sort of lends itself to that vibe, I, I felt like. It turned out really cool too. Lyndon also did this one. He came out, he filmed our whole set. And this song, it, Narcissistic Voyeur, it's called. Uh, this was actually one of the songs that existed even went before I joined the band, uh, it's evolved a lot since then, but um, the basic idea is is pretty much the same. We've been playing it live for a long time. If you've seen us live, you've definitely heard it. I think we've played it at every show pretty much, but after it's evolved to the point where it has wanted to record it and, and put it on this EP, and it's a really fun song. It's definitely a thrasher. It's a headbanger. It's the uh, it's probably the fastest song, like straight through. It, the, the, it's not the fastest. Black Snake probably has the fastest moments on it, but yeah. uh, Narcissistic is pretty much like a straight old school thrash song. Uh, plus, I have a bass solo at the end, um, sort of. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> that actually Josh says that uh, Gremlins the most technical for him. This is the most technical song for me. It's not. It's still not super technical for me, but it's definitely like the busiest for me uh, on the bass. Of a, like a lot of uh, stuff going on uh, that I got to mentally keep track of. But um, it's a super fun song. Uh, it was a super fun video. I hope you guys like this one. Here it is, Narcissistic Voyeur, live. <laughs> Bye. 
So hope you guys liked that one. Again, that's Narcissistic Voyeur, also available on our YouTube channel. Uh, I think that's actually the last song on the viral EP. So we'll pretty much wrap it up there. I think, Josh, anything else specifically you wanted to say about any of that? No, narcissistic? About whatever. Mm. Any of that? Anything with narcissistic? Or? No, I mean, I have an awesome rim drum solo in that yes. song. So, you know, that's, that's a, the important part. <laughs> a one <Yeah>. measure break. <laughs> Literally a break yeah. in that song. Yeah. Yeah. We had to put one in there somewhere. And just you gotta catch our breath yeah. at some point. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, again, I'm Jerry Walker. This is Josh Harms from Sardis. If you like our stuff, you know, please check us out. Our, our music is available everywhere, uh, Spotify and, and all that stuff. Uh please go to the Sardis YouTube channel, subscribe to that. Uh, we'll definitely have some more stuff. Got some other stuff in the works right now, actually, uh, that'll be coming out on that channel, too. Not to be that guy, but, hey, like, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff on this channel. You know, if you like what I'm doing, uh, you want to see more uh, of our regional, our 417-918-whatever area codes, whatever. <laughs> this area is local bands. Um, you know, subscribe to this, and I will. I promise I will, I will get some more stuff out pretty soon. Viral pandemic withstanding, uh, I will, if I've got to do some some video chat stuff, I may do it that way. Uh, if I can get someone else to, uh, to come in here, maybe sort of one at a time, whatever, we'll, we'll figure that out. But again, Sardis Band on all of our social media. Our main website is SardisMetal.com. You can access everything from there very easily. We have a ton of merch. Like, see this shirt? <laughs> This is one of our uh, current shirt designs. We have this in t-shirts, this this sort of t-shirt, t-shirt, long sleeve hoodie sort of version of it that I'm wearing here. And we got one of the a gremlin shirt. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, go to our website, go to merch, or you can go to the band camp. All that stuff is available there. That would be great. Uh, anyway, guys, tell me in the comments down here, what do you want to see on here? Do you want to see anything sort of different as far as the format goes? Or give me specific uh, band ideas, people that you would like to see on here. I'm sort of known for rock and metal mostly, but I'm open to uh, all kind, all sorts of different genres of stuff. I per I'm very eclectic myself, so uh, I'm probably friends with you know a lot of the people anyway. So let me know who you'd like to see on here. Subscribe to this channel, Jay Walker Production, JWP, if you would. Uh, I will have a variety of other content on here, but this will be the, the main series that I'm going to have going on as far as this goes. Your music scene. Josh, thanks for being the first guest on this oh, channel. I'm honored. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to drink some whiskey or something. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We'll see you next time.